I am Dr. Savita Dandakeri, Professor, Department of Prosthodontics, Anapoya Dental College. Today, I will be giving you all few insights on patient education and complete denture maintenance. Now, what do we learn today? The nature of complete denture, training the patient how to wear the denture, how to deal with the excess of saliva and speech accommodations as well as eating suggestions, proper tongue position and the importance of tissue health and hygiene of complete denture. Now to begin with, many prosthetic failures may result not from technical problems but from miscommunication between the dentist and the patient in regard to treatment result. Now, when the patient, when a complete denture patient comes to our practice, the patient will have unrealistically high expectations. He feels that the denture, what the artificial denture, what we are giving him, is similar like his natural teeth. So we need to make him understand his expectations will not be like the natural teeth. The artificial denture is, is different from what natural teeth are. So we should make him understand the difference between the natural teeth and the artificial denture. So, it is not unusual for the patient to be unrealistically high expectations at the beginning of the complete denture treatment. So, the patient education should help, the, help them to create a positive attitude by informing the patient about the special problems associated with wearing of complete denture as well as proper oral and denture hygiene. Now, let us see what are the special problems the patients are going to face once we give them the denture? Now, when do we do this patient education? A thorough patient education program should begin with the initial patient visit and be interwoven throughout the denture construction. So that initially when the patient comes to our practice, from that day itself, we need to tell the patient what are the problems they will encounter and how different are their dentures from natural teeth. From the first appointment, the patient must be given an idea of the final outcome of the treatment. We will be knowing how their alveolar ridges are. Few patients might, have, um, might, might come with severely resolved alveolar ridges. So such patients, initially itself, we should tell them how the retention of the denture will be. Now, the patient education program consists of two phases. The first phase should be primarily verbal in nature. We need to talk to the patient. The patient should be encouraged to ask any questions and misunderstanding should be thoroughly discussed. Now questions in the sense, the patient should be encouraged, the patient will ask, all, will ask the dentist questions like mastication and aesthetics, the appearance with the denture, the retention of the denture. So all these questions should be clearly clarified before we start with the treatment. Now, the second phase of patient education program consists of a clear, well-written summary of the expected problems and hygiene recommendations. This should be given to the patient at the appointment before the denture insertion. Now, the first thing on the denture insertion appointment, we should train them how to wear the dentures. The patient should be allowed to view themselves. Probably we can give a mirror in his hand and the dentist will place the lower denture first and then the upper denture. Once we place the denture, then what happens? We'll see. I've kept these emojis here so that initially the patient will be very happy that he has got his new teeth. Immediately after some time, the happiness slightly fades and he goes into a confused state. Now, here we'll understand why the patient is confused and how to deal with this confusion. That's why before giving the denture itself, you need to educate the patient to avoid this confusion. Now, the first thing we need to talk to the patient about the nature of complete denture. So the first concept 
of retention should be discussed with the patient. Now, when we talk about retention, we should make them understand the natural teeth are retained by roots which are embedded in the alveolar bone. So the teeth do not move when they talk or when they smile or when they masticate. Whereas the complete denture is just placed on the mucosa which is quite slippery in nature. So chances of movement of the denture is very high when it's very high. Now second point is the masticatory forces generated by the denture. Most of the time the patient goes back home, they start eating and the next day they come and tell us I can't chew food, particularly hard food like my natural dentition. So we need to tell them the amount of force generated by your natural teeth is almost 80 pounds, the biting force, whereas in a natural, in an artificial dentition, it is around 11.7 pounds. So there is a wide difference. So this point should be clearly understood by the patient. Next is the proprioceptive mechanism. When, once you lose your teeth, the proprioceptive mechanism is also lost and they will the complete denture patients will find it difficult to detect minute variations. Now, immediately once you place the denture inside the mouth, your denture is recognized as a foreign object by the oral cavity. So now this leads to stimulation of the salivary glands resulting in excess salivation. So the patient will tell you all, my dentures do not fit well, particularly the ma mandibular denture because it is surrounded by uh, the floor of the mouth accumulates a lot of saliva and the denture tends to flow because of the watery saliva. So how do we address this to the patient? We need to tell the patient or the patient should be assured that this overactive flow of saliva is a normal reaction to new dentures and it will decrease over the next few weeks. So we should ask the patient to swallow the saliva. Deglutation is necessary to evacuate the saliva and you should advise them not to rinse or spit the saliva. Compulsory rinsing or spitting will result in unsettling of the denture. Now, speech accommodation. This is one more problem the patients encounter. Why? Because once the denture is inserted, they feel something is there in the mouth. So the feeling of bulk, as well as excessive salivation, the speech becomes distorted. And the patient should be motivated that this difficulty is temporary. The speech distortion is especially evident during the uh, pronunciation of certain sibilant sounds. The fluency of the speech also will be affected. So what do we tell the patients? The patient should be advised or encouraged to read quietly, uh, to read, sorry, to read aloud at home, reading slower speech and removes the in intense concentration on how they sound towards themselves. So in next two to three weeks, after constant practice and motivation, the patient will overcome this difficulty. Now, eating suggestions. Once you give the denture to the patient, the patient goes home and he wants to eat a lot of things because he must have not eaten for months together. So now he wants to eat everything what is there in the table. So what to eat and how to eat. Now, now, eating suggestions. The patient should be advised that chewing is not random but an intentional and selective activity. Their eating skills should be slowly developed and refined. Initially, the patient should limit themselves to soft food or crispy food that are easily chewed. They should avoid tough fibrous food that will overtax the capacity of their residual ridges. Now, how to eat? This is also very important because the dentures are just placed on the mucosa. It is quite different from that of the natural teeth. Now, cut the food into small pieces and make them soft. 
placing the food in the posterior area, particularly in the molar, increases the power of the masticatory stroke and places the occlusal load on the primary stress bearing areas. And bilateral chewing also aids in stabilization of the denture bases, distributing the forces of mastication on both the sides of the residual ridge. This counteracts the potential tipping of the denture base. Now the chewing stroke should be up and down motion which helps to minimize the lateral thrust and stabilizes the denture. So always you ask the patient initially in the, to just chew in an up and down stroke rather than laterally to minimize the lateral thrust. Once they master this or once they become comfortable with their chewing habits then I think they get used to with the lateral strokes also. Now the eating suggestions. Now eating with the denture is a developed skill that varies with many factors like age, the degree of alveolar resorption and neuromuscular coordination. When the patient is old, very old and if the alveolar ridges are severely developed and this neuromuscular coordination is not well developed, the patients do have problems with eating and these should, the patient should be advised every now and then regarding the eating skills. Now, the tongue position plays a very important role. Once you give the denture to the patient, the most common complaint of the patient is that his upper denture is very retentive but the mandibular denture is not. The mandibular denture keeps shifting. The, most of the problems are with the mandibular denture. The common complaint of the patient is that the mandibular dentures are loose. Now why is this? There are three basic handicaps. One is that the total surface area or the basal seat area. The total surface area in the maxillary is uh, the surface area is quite bigger when compared to that of the mandibular. So more the surface area, more is the retention. Now the mandibular dentures are surrounded buccally as li as and lingually by the muscles. So these have a tendency to push the denture. And proper tongue position, very important. Now the tongue position. The tongue helps to stabilize the denture. So. In order to determine whether the patient has a normal tongue position or an abnormal retracted tongue, what do we do is, when the mouth is just open to receive food, the clinician should see, the, should see only the dorsal surface of the tongue, the tip of the tongue contact with the lingual surface of the lower anteriors and the tongue should be in intimate contact with the lingual surface of the denture and the floor of the mouth in the normal level. When this tongue position is there, it will help to stabilize the denture. Whereas in retracted tongue position, the stability of the denture will not be good. Once you educate the patient regarding how to wear the denture, how to eat and um, the, how to contract with the problems of saliva and speech, then we tell about the maintenance of denture, the maintenance of tissue health as well as the maintenance of denture hygiene. Now maintenance of tissue health, there are three important points here. One is tissue rest, complete denture hygiene and tissue hygiene. Now why tissue rest is important? Some of the patients would not like to remove the dentures in the night, they want to wear it so we need to make them understand what are the drawbacks of wearing the denture. Now tissue rest allows two purposes. One, it allows time for soaking of the denture in a denture cleansing solution and rest for the oral tissues. Now why this rest is so important? Removing the denture before sleeping serves two purposes. That is, it provides a convenient time for soaking of the denture in a denture cleansing solution and rest for the oral tissues is adequate, adequate to offset the daily stresses placed upon them during the denture wearing. The patient should be informed that the oral mucosa were never intended to be covered by a hard tissue. So all the occlusal forces are compressive in nature. 
Failure to recover from these forces might result in increased soreness and irritation. When we remove the dentures out in the night, the tissues which are compressed, they recover back and they assume their natural or their normal position. So in this way, inflammation will be reduced. Now denture hygiene. Like the natural teeth, denture also will accumulate plaque which tends to which leads to calculus formation. So if denture hygiene is not maintained, most of the time it results in candidial infection also. So this point should be stressed to the patient regarding denture hygiene. Some of the patients think, okay, these are artificial, I don't need to clean it, but it is not. Now, denture hygiene. We have, nowadays we get a variety of denture brushes, we get uh, denture containers also where they can place their dentures. So mechanical cleansing agents gently brushing with a soft denture brush and a non-abrasive agent. Usually we tell the patient to use a mild soap but now denture toothpastes are also available easily in the market so they can use that provided they are non-abrasive. Now sonic cleansers are also there to cleanse their dentures. Now if the patient has got a soft relining material on the tissue surface of the denture, so you can advise the patient gently wash the denture under cold running water with a soft cotton. Now we have got some denture cleansing agents also, the Fixodent, all those um, agents are um, uh, denture cleansing agents are available in the market. So how do we use it? So if the patient is using the tablet daily, then drop one tablet into warm water. Do not use hot water which will warp the denture. Now soak the dentures for three to five minutes and show that they are submerged. Then brush the denture, brush the denture using a soft bristle toothbrush and discard the remaining solution after use. Use cool and warm water and not hot water. Use running water to cleanse the dentures thoroughly. Without cleansing the dentures thoroughly, the patient should not wear the dentures. Now, regarding tissue hygiene and massage. Now, since the patient is completely edentulous, they feel they do not need to cleanse or clean their residual ridges. It is always important to gently brush or rub the residual ridges with a washcloth for the removal of plaque and food debris that are accumulated. Only rinsing the oral cavity might not remove the food debris. Brushing the tongue is also equally important so that to remove any food debris which are present now, once the, uh, it is also seen that once you brush your tongue, your taste perception also improves. Now, what instructions you give to the patient? Dentures tend to accumulate more food debris than natural teeth. Hence, the patient is asked to clean them after every meal and before retiring at night. It is recommended that the patient have, should have two brushes, a denture brush for cleaning the denture and a soft toothbrush for cleaning the supporting tissues. Denture brushes clean more effectively than because the bristles are arranged to flow the shape of the denture. A regular soft toothbrush is, an, is also an alternative. Brushes with stiff bristles can damage the denture material. Abrasive toothpaste should be avoided. Commercially available denture cleansing solutions and tablets can also be used. Now, denture adhesives. We don't give denture adhesives to all the patients, but in few patients where the ridges are severely compromised or there is a lot of uh, ridge resorption, then the retention will not be good. For such patients, we do advise denture adhesives. Now, how to use them? If we are advising the denture adhesive, we should also tell them how to use it. Now, food debris on the tissue surface of the denture should be wiped clean. Wet the dentures before the application of the adhesive. Now, a small amount of adhesive are applied on the tissue bearing surface. In the maxillary denture, it is the anterior alveolar ridge, the center of the heart palate and the posterior palatal seal. 
in the mandibular denture adhesive must be applied along the entire sulcus area you, you can appreciate in the picture which is there so this is the way they need to apply the denture adhesives then once they apply the denture adhesives the denture should be sealed and held or placed firmly by hand pressure for 5 to 10 seconds the gauze is used to remove the excess adhesive Patient is advised to close in centric occlusion several times to spread the adhesive as a thin layer. Now, do not use denture adhesive unless it is advised when we do not use this denture adhesives. If you have an ill-fitting denture, if there is an open cut or sore in the mouth, if the dentures are not recently evaluated by the dentist, inadequate oral hygiene and known allergy to any ingredient in the product. Now, overuse of denture adhesive causes certain changes in the mucosa, pathological changes in the oral cavity unnoticed by the patient, for example, inflammation, erythema, ulceration and colonization by Candida albicans. Now, the physiological changes, if they use too much of the denture adhesive, it adds on to the thickness of the base and increases the vertical dimension. Now, how do we check whether the patient is overusing their denture adhesive? Start with a small amount of adhesive. If the adhesive oozes off from the denture into the mouth, then they are likely using more of the denture adhesive. Know that 2-4 to four ounce tube of the denture adhesive used by the consumer with upper and lower denture should last for 7-8 to eight weeks. Track how much of denture adhesive you use by marking on the calendar and when you start with the new tube and when the tube is empty. Now, caring of the denture, very, very important. The denture should be handled carefully. Dropping them a few inches into the sink can break the denture base as well as the tooth. So, whenever they are cleaning it, make sure that to fill the sink with water or lay a soft towel down. Always keep, it, keep your dentures out of reach from children and pets, especially cats. Now, if the denture becomes dry, they may change in shape. And when you take your dentures out at the night, place them in a container of denture cleansing solution or water. Never put the dentures in hot water as they, as they will warp. If your dentures break, crack or chip, or if your denture tooth becomes loose, Consult the dentist immediately for repair. In cases of soreness and the patient is advised to discontinue to use the processes and consult the dentist immediately. The patient is advised not to perform self-adjustments or self-repair of the denture. So here the patient is doing self-repair. You should tell them not to do any repair by themselves which will cause them more harm. Now, the periodic recall visits. After 24 hours, you, you should call the patient after 24 hours to correct the occlusal disharmony and to check for immediate tissue reaction. Then after one week, again to check for tissue reaction and ask for the patient's experience and comfort. Then after three to six months, again check for tissue reaction and check for the amount of rich resorption. Then after one year, to check whether relining or rebasing is necessary. Post-insertion instruction should be reinforced in, a, in the initial visit itself and uh, old dentures should have to be replaced for every five years. Dentures are not a substitute for missing teeth but a prosthetic solution for no teeth. Every denture wearing patient should be in a complete denture maintenance and education program. Patient education program should maximize opportunities for patient involvement and should establish the patient as well as the dentist's responsibility in complete denture service. Thank you.